Good morning, Collegiate Wesley family. We are so glad to have the opportunity to gather together digitally this morning as we stand in solidarity with those who are most vulnerable to the COVID-19 virus. As you probably know, we've suspended worship this morning, uh, but we have a time to get together this way to have a short reflection and some time to pray. We wanna let you know of a couple of things as we get started this morning. One, that um, while worship is suspended, our small groups and clusters still have the opportunity to meet as they feel safe and, and as are people available. And so please be in contact with the leaders of your particular groups if you wanna know what's going on with those or if you have questions or concerns about those groups meeting. As we do that, we also wanna let you know that um, we have been sanitizing and cleaning and disinfecting the church. And the particular thing that we are using is a CDC approved cleaner for the COVID-19 virus. And so we will continue to clean and sanitize as we go to make sure that um, when people are in our space that it's as safe as possibly could be. We also have a group of people who are forming to help respond to any needs that our community might have. Right now, we're not entirely sure what some of those needs might be. Uh, they may be something like picking up groceries for someone who um, doesn't feel comfortable or safe leaving their home at this time and just dropping those off. It may be a group of people who are willing to come to the church and help sanitize or disinfect certain things more often um, than, than what's regularly scheduled at this time. So if you would like to sign up for that group, there will be uh, a link that you can do that with. It will be in our uh, on our groups page as well on our website. And so we can help stay connected. We want to invite you to go and fill out our digital connection card, our check-in card. In a moment, we'll post the link and you can head over to that. And we'd love for you to share information and prayer requests so that we can continue to find ways to stay connected in the midst of all of this. So now we'll give you a moment to find that link to fill that out and we'll come back together for a time of reflection. Thanks for joining us on our um, digital effort this morning to um, be with you and to be present with you during this time of uncertainty. Um, it was difficult to uh, cancel services this morning, but um, we thought about the, the need to make sure that we uh, participate in flattening the curve, that we don't contribute to the spike. Uh, so we thought it would be best to uh, not assemble this morning. I want to thank uh, Dr. Greg Halverson and Dr. Bonnie Beer, who helped. Uh, I, I contacted them. Um, they helped me in making this decision, along with uh, lay leadership and the staff have also helped. This morning, I wanted to share with you uh, a parable that uh, I thought would be important for us to think about as we um, go through these next few weeks of, uh, of uncertainty. In the early 1800s, a butcher who lived in the town of Teplik presented a gift to Rabbi Nachman of Braslav, a city in the Ukraine. The gift was a most exquisite and beautiful chair, and everyone who laid eyes on it immediately knew that the chair was something special. Rabbi Nachman loved his gift. He sat in the chair all the days of his life. One night, Rabbi Nachman dreamed that he was sitting in his chair as it flew through the clouds and carried him up to the heavens in his dream, Rabbi Nachman saw himself approaching Jerusalem, but as, he, but as he drew closer to the city, he woke up. After Rabbi Nachman died, his disciples kept the chair in the rabbi's memory. The chair was given a special place next to the Ark in the synagogue, where it remained for decades until World War II. When the Nazis invaded, the descendants of the disciples of Rabbi Nachman realized that in order to find a way to escape the Holocaust, they would have to scatter. But what should they do about the chair? They knew they couldn't leave it behind, but they knew that the chair was too large for any one of them to carry. So they cut the chair into pieces. Each descendant of the disciples took one piece of the chair. Finally, before fleeing, the descendants of the disciples of Rabbi Nachman made a promise to one another. At the end of the terrible war, they would again gather in Jerusalem, and there they would reassemble the chair. Now, as everyone knows, this was a horrible time in world history. Few Jews escaped unharmed. 
but every single person who carried a piece of that chair survived and arrived safely in the city of Jerusalem. It was there in Jerusalem that the chair was put back together. Reassembled, the chair looked exactly as it had in the time of Rabbi Nachman, when he, was first, when he first received it as a gift from the butcher of Teblik. To this day, in the Bratslav Synagogue in Jerusalem, you can see Rabbi Nachman's chair exactly where you'd expect it, next to the Ark. Rabbi Sandy Sasso offers these comments on the story. It's not just a true story, it's a truth story. Everybody carries a piece of the puzzle of life's meaning, and you have to hold on to that piece of the puzzle with all your soul as if your life depended on it, because it does. Some people carry more pieces of the puzzle than others, but no one carries them all. There's at least one missing piece. Only when you remember that you're carrying the missing piece, the piece that others may be looking for, and that they may be carrying the piece that you're seeking, then will you arrive safely at your place of promise. So as we go through this uncertain time, I would encourage you to remember this chair story and to remember that you have a piece, that you have a piece of the puzzle. So that when we gather again, whenever that is, we hope in a couple of weeks, that you will bring your piece back to you. Each one is important. Each one needs to come back together to the community and you need to take care of your peace at this particular time. Thanks for joining us this morning, and we'll see you in worship at some point in the future. We recognize this morning that when we feel helpless and we feel like we don't know exactly what we can do, that one thing that we can continue to do is to pray. And so I hope you've shared your prayer request with us on that check-in form on our website so that we can be praying for you and connecting during this time. We do want to be praying this morning for the family of Jan Stiles, who is the, the spouse of former pastor here at Collegiate United Methodist, Jim Stiles, who passed away. We will be sure to pass on details about her services as we become aware of them, but we want to be praying for their family during this time. We also want to lift up our college students, our Wesley students, some who have had to return from their study abroad trips, some whose trips that they had planned had to have been canceled. For those who are going home um, where it's perhaps not a safe place and for those who are just feeling added anxiety on top of their normal schoolwork and life. We want to lift them up this morning in prayer and remember them. We will be finding ways to connect with them, um, not even just across physical distance, um, but even for some of them as they feel isolated. So we also want to lift up any prayers that you all have, and we will continue to do that as we receive those. Uh, if you're not able to use that check-in form, you can email me with any prayer requests that you might have, and we will be sending those out in our Thursday email this week. So please watch for that. So I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath, to find yourself in a posture of prayer, whether that's head bowed, eyes closed, looking up, looking at those around you, to recognize that wherever we are this morning, that God is there with us. And uh, during this time of prayer, you are invited to lift up those things on your heart and mind as we pray together. So let us pray. God, when we aren't sure, help us to be calm. When information comes from all sides, correct and not, help us to discern. When fear makes it hard to breathe and anxiety seems to be the order of the day, slow us down, oh God. Help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't touch with our hands. Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distant. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect love casts out all fear. For the doctors we pray, for the nurses we pray, for the technicians and the janitors and the aides and the caregivers and all who are unable to leave their work, we pray. For the researchers and theorists, the epidemiologists and investigators, for those who are sick, and for those who are grieving, we pray. 
For all those who are affected around the world, we pray for safety, for health, and for wholeness. May we feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, and house those without homes. May we walk with those who feel alone, and may we do all we can to heal the sick in spite of the epidemic and in spite of our fear. Help us, O oh God, that we might help each other in the love of the Creator, in the name of the Healer, and in the life of the Holy Spirit that is in all and with all, we pray. Amen.